Welcome to this edition of MRI's Dynamic Seminar Series. In this session, we will uncover the long hidden secrets of the incredible power of heat shock protein activation technology. Once again, MRI was first in introducing cutting edge technology through the development of a viable heat shock protein activating product. The revelation you are about to witness is founded in real science. In fact, there are hundreds of exciting studies on heat shock proteins. Better yet, the compound we will reveal is clinically tested in trained human athletes. This is truly cutting edge technology. Heat shock proteins are the next revolution in performance supplementation. Introducing revolutionary heat shock activation technology, HSP Active, with patented Tex OE only from MRI. Finally, turn more of the protein you eat into the muscle you want. Heat shock proteins are functional proteins that fold dietary proteins, the proteins you eat, into muscle usable form. Remember this simple equation. More heat shock proteins equal more muscle usable protein. This illustration represents one of the key functions of heat shock proteins. First, a newly formed, unfolded protein enters a heat shock protein. Next, the heat shock protein folds the protein into muscle usable form. Finally, the folded protein exits the heat shock protein and becomes new muscle fiber. What we're talking about is a complete shift in paradigms. Through HSP technology, we can now impact muscle protection, recovery, and growth from the inside out. You see, until now, the industry standard has focused on supporting muscle growth from the outside in with things such as creatine, proteins, vasodilators, and carbohydrate electrolyte drinks. This isn't to imply that these compounds are no longer valid. That certainly is not the case. However, through HSP technology, we can now impact muscle growth from a completely new angle. To demonstrate the dramatic potential of heat shock proteins on muscle growth, we'll need to see how they work to complete the protein cycle. A common question among bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts is, how much dietary protein can my body actually use to make muscle? This is a very difficult question to answer due to a variety of factors and considerations. For instance, things like one's body mass, their workout intensity, the quality of a protein they consume, and even the bioavailability of the protein they consume. In other words, there may not be a one-size-fits-all answer to this question. One thing we must consider is how proteins are utilized and converted into muscle in the body. Consider a whole dietary protein as being similar to a structure comprised of building blocks. These building blocks are amino acids. During the digestion process, the protein is disassembled into its amino acids. These amino acids can then be reconfigured into new body-specific proteins. In this case, we're talking about muscle-usable protein. Here's where things get interesting. Heat shock proteins work at the reconstruction phase of this process to ensure proper construction and placement of muscle usable proteins. So now we're talking about addressing a previously hidden step in the muscle building process. Previously, the industry focused on producing higher grade proteins to impact muscle growth. There's nothing wrong with that. MRI even offers the leading protein PRONOS However, through HSP technology, we can now impact the actual protein processing phase of the protein cycle. However, we must remember that amino acids from dietary protein can only be utilized for new muscle if they are properly formed or folded by activated heat shock proteins. Therefore, slow activation of heat shock proteins are essentially the end of the protein line. Of course, we can deliver ample amounts of amino acids to tissues with PRONOS. However, without activated heat shock proteins, there can be a little bit of a traffic jam of amino acids waiting for conversion to muscle-specific protein. Now, if there is a way to enhance this process with faster activation and greater numbers of heat shock proteins, there would be incredible potential for dramatic acceleration of new muscle protein production. This includes the process of hypertrophy, which is adding new proteins to existing muscle, and hyperplasia, 
which is the actual creation of new muscle fibers. To give us a better understanding of these processes, we're going to need to take an in-depth look at heat shock proteins in action. The first thing to consider is that heat shock proteins are not dietary proteins. There are three basic forms of protein, dietary, the type you eat, structural, like muscle, and functional, ones that perform specific tasks in the body. Heat shock proteins are functional proteins. They carry out specific physiological duties. Interestingly, they are found in all living things to include plants, animals, and even single cell organisms. They are found in all cells, fluids, and regions of the body where they play key roles in cell protection and repair. Some HSPs are called inducible HSPs as they activate and multiply in response to stress such as intense exercise. These are the specific type we are so interested in activating for obvious reasons. Intense exercise inflicts substantial overall damage to muscle fiber, destruction of muscle tissue, degradation of intracellular proteins, cellular growth inhibition, and temporary cellular oxygen starvation are just a few examples. However, these negatives are a positive force in promoting new muscle growth as long as they don't snowball out of control with the effects of overtraining. Fortunately, heat shock proteins mobilize and work to rescue damaged muscles. Activated heat shock proteins are involved in the manufacture and folding of proteins into their muscle usable form. Other key functions of heat shock proteins include overall cellular protection, cellular repair, transporting new proteins to growing muscle fibers, clearing out dead weight proteins, and the proliferation of satellite cells. This image represents the very birth of new proteins deep inside of cells. This is a messenger RNA that holds the code for new proteins. Ribosomes are reading the code and producing a new protein one amino acid at a time. Special heat shock proteins, shown here in yellow, ensure that the emerging proteins don't become malformed or tangled, which would render them unusable. Now we see the four possible stages of new protein production. First, we have a newly formed protein. That's great. If the protein becomes misfolded, like in figure 2, it is completely unusable. If a series of proteins become tangled, they are also unusable and must be recycled or ejected from the cell. What we're really looking for is a perfect fold that is shaped exactly into muscle usable form. Of course, this is the job of heat shock proteins. If, perchance, a protein is damaged beyond repair, it must be ejected from the cell. Specialized heat shock proteins perform this task. This is an important process to clear the cell to make way for new growth. One of the most exciting things that heat shock proteins impact is the proliferation of what are called satellite cells. These are muscle-ready master cells that are located around muscle fibers. These satellite cells are pictured here as the blue dots. Here's where it gets interesting. When activated, satellite cells are mobilized to fuse and repair damaged muscle fibers. Satellite cells may even be used to form new muscle cells altogether. This is called hyperplasia. Activated heat shock proteins may increase the number of available satellite cells. This brings the potential for more muscle-ready cells on call to promote new growth. Although we've had a fairly scientific look at heat shock proteins, there are four primary functions to remember. These are outlined on pages 13 and 14 in the HSP Active book. Number one is new muscle growth through hypertrophy and hyperplasia. This may include the formation of more muscle-ready satellite cells. Number two is the addition and acceleration of muscle protein production. These muscle proteins specifically are actin and myosin. Third is the repair of existing damage either by repairing existing damage or clearing out dead weight proteins. Fourth, heat shock proteins protect from future damage by fortifying muscle proteins, muscle fibers, and cells. We hope you have enjoyed this program and have gained a much greater understanding of heat shock proteins, what they are, what they do, and why they are such an important component of muscle integrity, recovery, and growth. Until next time, train hard 
and use the power of MRI to help you achieve your goals.